Brian, what's on your radar? So over the summer, I reported here and over The Intercept that a batch of audios we had obtained, which were backed up by interviews and a cache of emails, showed that the right-wing Bolivian defense minister, Luis Fernando Lopez, had been plotting to import American mercenaries into the country ahead of the October 2020 election to prevent the party of Evo Morales from coming back to power. The party's candidate, Luis Arce, was polling strongly ahead, and the coup government, which had ousted Morales a year earlier, was panicking. And the plotting was serious. Here's some of what we uncovered. We have a lot of moving players, a lot of moving parts. We can absolutely do this with no problem. Um, I would need for me to talk to the, to the high command in the police so we can get your three C-130s to pick up personnel in, um, in, in Southern Command in, uh, in Homestead Air Force Base. We can only get about 70 people. We're going to pick them up as independent contractors, security contractors. I'll, I'll, get, uh, I'll get the contracts out to them in, in a very speedy way. By the time the C-130s get inbound, I'll have them contracted, I'll have them geared up, and I'll have them, all their weapons uh, ready. Arce, however, won 55% of the vote, and the plot fell apart. By crushing the right-wing candidate by 40 points, Arce appears to have drained the energy from the coup plotters. In the audios we obtained, you can see them going from confident to frightened as the reality sets in that there's no path back to power given the surge of popular support for Morales' party. Fast forward to this summer, when a group of Colombian mercenaries assassinated Haitian President Jovenel Moise in July, a crime we've covered closely here on Rising. Since then, I've been tracking leads that suggested there might be a connection between the killing in Haiti and the attempted coup in Bolivia. This week, the Bolivian government released evidence that a group of the mercenaries involved in the hit on Jovenel Moyes were previously in Bolivia ahead of the country's election late last year, and they connected the plotting to our earlier reporting. Unos audios que fueron publicados por el portal de Intercept ya hace un par de meses donde se escucha al exministro de defensa de la señora Yanine Áñez, el señor Luis Fernando López. The mercenaries were in Bolivia, government, government officials said, with orders to assassinate Arce. The audio I just played is from a man named Joe Pereira, that audio at the top, who was a central organizer of the effort at a second coup. Some of the evidence that the intent was to assassinate Arce, according to Bolivian Minister of Government Carlos del Castillo del Carpio, came from the computer of Pereira, which Bolivian authorities investigated after our expose. So leading the advance team in Haiti that ultimately assassinated the president, according to Colombian authorities, was Colombian mercenary Herman Alejandro Rivera Garcia, who is now being held in Haitian custody. Rivera, who goes by Colonel Mike, entered Bolivia on October 16, 2020, under passport number AV969623, two days before the Bolivian election, according to the Bolivian government. He came into Bolivia from Colombia via the Vero Vero airport in Santa Cruz, and he stayed at the Hotel Presidente in La Paz, just two blocks from the presidential palace. Rivera is said to be one of those who pulled the trigger on Moyes and was one of the few who was told in the days ahead that the plan was not to arrest Moyes, as most of the Colombians had been told, but to assassinate him. The Haitian assassination team was organized by the Doral, Florida-based security contractor Counterterrorism Unit Federal Academy LLC, or CTU, which is run by Antonio Emmanuel Intriago Valera and Arcanjal Pretel Ortiz, who allegedly acted as a recruiter for the team. Both Pretel and Intriago entered Bolivia between October 16th and October 19th, Bolivian officials said. They entered through Vero Vero Airport in Santa Cruz, which is the home base of the country's right-wing opposition. Two other men, a former member of the Colombian police and another man named Enrico Galindo Arias, entered through the Colombian Vero Vero route, later staying with Rivera at the Hotel Presidente in La Paz. The Bolivians even released their hotel room numbers. That was 1406, 1407, and 1409. So, Robbie, we, we now know what rooms the potential assassins uh, of Luis Arce were staying in in October, ahead of and just after the Bolivian election. And we also know that they are, in fact, capable of assassination, because about eight months later, 
when they were sent to Haiti, they pulled off the murder of jo Jovenel Moise. And uh, we talked at the time of that, of that assassination of this, this kind of new element that's being introduced into our politics, which is there are so many well-trained killers mm -hmm. around the world today that with enough money uh, and enough know-how, you can now get a very professionalized team of assassins that we've talked about here, that these Colombians were trained by the U.S. as part of our drug war down in Colombia. Right. Uh, which this is, this is a whole other level of, of politics. You, it used to be that the only people organizing assassinations were the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> like right. Was, right. There was a joke that why has there never been a coup in the United States? Well, because there's no U.S. Embassy <laughs> in, in the United States. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you make of, of the fact that the, the right wing in Bolivia went so far as to bring in a, a hit squad right. against Luis Arce? Yeah, and as you say, there are these really, there are so many professionally trained uh, mercenaries now. You know, we th it, it's actually, it, it's interesting, there's been very little political violence in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, very few, uh, I mean, there's the couple high-profile presidential assassinations, but very, very few slain um, Congress people, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, is political violence is actually pretty common if you go back mm -hmm. even historically. Uh, how many, um, you know, monarchs of, of Russia, of, uh, of several several other countries are killed in battle or assassinated. Like, like several of the last czars were all knifed um, in, in medieval England, uh, murders of various cases. So political violence is a, is a common, and I'm sure in, uh, I'm, I'm less knowledgeable right. about history in other parts of the world, but it was very common in medieval China and Japan too. Um, we, we've, we've just had a kind of era of, of certainly in the West of vastly less political violence. So the, the concern would be, but now we have the, you know, sometimes the, the, the political climate goes one way and then there's no means to really do it, but now we have, we have means again to do it because we have very professionally trained people and high-skilled um, kind of assassin-type plots. Right, and it, it, if it only takes uh, a hit squad of a couple dozen, right. uh, you know, to be able to change the course of history. Right, uh, I mean, you should just take a couple people with knives in the right, <laughs> Time, right? There was right. very little security for people. You could, with enough motivation, you could, you know, you can kill the, the king or the, the right, local right. person. Right, and, it, and it, be, it becomes an existential uh, question for a lot of these people. The defense minister, Lopez, he's now on the run. The interior minister, who, yeah. he, who, the, who Lopez had implicated in this plotting, is now under arrest in the United States for, for bribery. And so if you lose power and you're going to be either killed or, or jailed or, or have to flee the country, then you have every incentive to try to uh, orchestrate some type of violent response to keep yourself in power. Uh, it, I think it is something that's gonna require uh, some legislative response you know, f uh, globally. Like this, this you know, governments just can't let this get out of control. Uh, it, you know, you don't you don't want the United States to have a monopoly on assassinations. I'm not saying that that is a good thing. <laughs> right. Um, and the but you can but you cannot have uh, you know right wing elements around the world that have this that 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 feel like with impunity they can hire hit squads. It's a and prelude in, to in, social collapse. In Haiti, we have backed Ariel Henry, who investigators say, or, and and the prosecutor was about to charge him with the assassination of the president. Uh, in, instead, the United States is, he fired that prosecutor, and the United States is backing Ariel Henry, who is alleged to have orchestrated the assassination. So if you pull it off successfully and re, we reward you for that, we're going to get more of this. And there, um, there's no doubt there were elements in the United States uh, who, who would have been just fine if Luis Arce had even gunned down. Yeah. U.S. Huh. US uh, interventionist uh, foreign policy strikes again. A lot of, lot of much blood on right. our hands. And, and now we're doing it. Now it's done through contractors. Right. Right. Team Rising joins us next. Stay with us.